So tell me what your great daring thing is that you're about to do. What is your thing that you're pulling up all the courage to do right now? Write another book. My great daring thing is to write another book. And this time I want I'm, I'm in two minds about the book that I want to write. One of the things that I've noticed is how difficult it is for entrepreneurs to actually let go um, in terms of succession planning. And this is particularly the case if they have a very strong social mission in their entrepreneurial venture. Uh, commercial entrepreneurs are trained to come in, build and exit. And so it's easier for them, I think. Um, but my hypothesis is that it is really difficult for entrepreneurs who have dedicated their lives to a vision and built something uh, to let go. And I see it again and again and again how difficult that is. That's very interesting. We didn't get around to talking about that in the paddle. That was one of the things I was yeah. quite... So, so how have you personally let go? What, what, what steps do you take when you let go? I don't think I can let go. This is one of the big problems that I personally also have. I just have masses of networks that I never let go of. And the other thing is it's very hard for me to let go of actually being involved in things. My husband keeps saying, you know, you're 66 years old. When is this going to stop? I'm like probably in the tomb. Um, I can't imagine, you know, not doing what I'm doing. At some point, I think that one of the great demographic challenges is that we are living longer and we are performing very well even at the ripe old age of 66 when most people are retired. And I think that the challenge for me is really to accept the fact that at some time I'm going to have to stop. Why? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to, at some point, I'm going to, my father lived till he was 100. So he basically said it was downhill after 97. <laughs> so, so is there a, more a matter of just going bigger, going to a higher plane and looking? Yes, which so is one of the reasons why the book. And bringing people yeah. beneath you to come yeah. through. Yes, and that, that is what I love about being where I am, which is really being able to share everything that I have accumulated and my contacts, etc., with students that are very promising and coming up and running. And not just students, but people in general, you know, who have an idea, who come. Um, I seem to be a reference point for that. So I think that's one of the reasons why I so enjoy what I'm doing. So in your feeling about innovation, where, where does an entrepreneur sit at the moment with, with innovation? What is their role? I think that there are many different ways to innovate. I think we always think about you know, coming up with a new invention or something. But there's so many different ways to innovate within organizations, with new approaches and new processes, new models. There's a lot written uh, on that, in fact. And the entrepreneur, I think, just to borrow from Schumpeter, the um, entrepreneur is the spark that ignites this new approach and gets other people you know, around, around them to continue to carry that out. Um, so I think that the entrepreneur is really the catalyst. And, and are they the keeper of the flame as well or not? It, that's one of the things that I want to find out. I mean, I'm really interested in this issue. Or are they the, the person with the matches and I they think, keep lighting fires? I think they do. I think they do both. But I think that the it's hard to... The um, problem is that when it is your baby, it's really hard to just sort of say, okay, there are others to whom the flame needs to be passed. I think intellectually they understand that, emotionally it's really hard. Yes, I can see that and I've been through that myself. And I bet. And so now, what's your vision for the Skoll Center? Where do you see it going? What are you going to do with it? I really want to grow the whole, um, I would like to call it actionable insight piece. In academia, they call it research, but to me, research is very much oftentimes sits on a shelf and doesn't actually um, have any output in terms of practice. And um, I want to be able to promote sort of the brain that Oxford is, the incredible power of its intellectual capital to actually begin to work with entrepreneurs who are on the ground trying to solve some of our biggest, hairiest problems to benefit from the tremendous insights that these researchers have 
from in, in multiple different challenges and to bring those together. That's, you know, really what I want to do is to bring the muscle of Oxford together with the power of the entrepreneur. Wow, that's going to be amazing. We'll see. Thank you very much. You're welcome.